Welcome to Discovering. Tonight we're building better bird habitat. Golden wing warblers are ground nesters, and so what you're looking for are things that can regenerate and create that ground cover that they can nest within. So sit back and relax. It's Monday night and it's time for Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. The call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure, the only way I measure feelings that I have for this fine land. There is so much to discover when you're a longtime lover of northern Michigan. So the golden wing warbler is a small little bird. You can probably fit into the palm of your hand. It's got, as the name states, golden wings on it. Little patches of golden on the wings, I should say. And the other colors are kind of white and gray with maybe a little black in it. And when it's singing, I believe it goes But we've been creating habitat for this bird because it has been seeing a steep population decline. It's been declining since the 1970s, probably about 70%. And a lot of the remaining population is in the Great Lakes area between Michigan, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. So we have a team of foresters with American Bird Conservancy that are focused specifically on creating golden winged warbler habitat, which is what we kind of see around us. It is young habitat with some residual deciduous trees. Typically, we are using stands that are primarily tag alder or aspen. Many people might know that as poplar trees. If it's an alder stand, we take it and we mow down probably about 60 to 70 percent of the existing alder trees and try and retain any larger overstory trees that are available to leave perch and singing sites for the golden winged warbler. If it's an aspen stand we can commonly do a typical timber harvest and what we do normally with aspen harvests is they require clear cuts because they come back, the trees regenerate the best with clear cuts because aspen needs a lot of sunlight. With the golden wing warbler, we usually leave, we try to leave about five to 15 trees per acre so that they have those perching sites for singing to their mates in the spring. It was interesting, you know, learning about, you know, how, you know, there's been a substantial decrease in the amount of habitat available for golden wings. I mean, you know, that was kind of an interesting element in this when we got involved with the project. And, you know, and then, you know, having the opportunity to cre create more habitat for, you know, birds that I'd really like to have in addition to that, but, you know, being the grouse and woodcock and, and you know, to open up some space, uh, you know, for the whitetail as well. Because one of the things that I've been learning is that a lot of the forest up here in the UP is getting very dense. And, and again, a lot of that's because of you know, maybe not as strong forest management practices as we should have. And so, you know, we, we need to do some things to, to help improve habitat opportunities for these uh, species up here. So the process of everything is we come out, I myself will come out and work with the landowner 
beforehand. We'll walk the site, talk about it, and see what the landowner themselves want to do. And if the creation of this habitat fits with what the landowner wants and also fits with what the land is calling for, we apply to these programs from the USDA NRCS. Once we have the funding secured from the program, the landowner will then hire a contractor to come through and bring in typically either a FECON forestry mower or maybe an echo mulcher, something to mow down what we have out here. And the funding from the NRCS is not specifically related to how much the contractor would charge. So what the landowner will do is work with the, land, the contractor to figure out their fees that they would charge. So it's not guaranteed that the landowner will have 100% of the costs covered, but we try to, it covers a large chunk of the costs. With the American Bird Conservancy's uh, approach to these uh, golden wings, you know, you want to have like about 15 uh, perch trees per acre. So that's one of the things that we're striving to get in place. Right away where all the tag alder starts in here, it's really filled in the areas here, kind of in this less dense area of red pines. So, so that's where we're hoping to start creating habitat in here, open it up some more so that they've got places to ground nest in here. Oh, hi, my name is Eric Swice. The uh, company is Northern Landworks, or a vegetation management and, and light earthwork company that serves the uh, entire state of Michigan and, and upper Midwest as well. Um, or in our favorite place to work, and that's the, that's the western UP, especially in the fall time. So we're thankful for that. Uh, we're out here today on a, a pretty neat project. And we're doing a, a wildlife habitat uh, enhancement cut here with our, our mulching equipment. And essentially, we're out here uh, doing a, roughly a 10-acre cut to begin the, the process of developing an early successional habitat on, on this parcel of, of private land. And what we're doing here today with our equipment is uh, you know, targeting species that are not beneficial to wildlife. So we're coming through here and uh, you know, we're, we're selectively taking our balsam, um, some of our aspen or other hardwoods, and we're really trying to promote uh, fruiting species throughout this property. So when we're finding uh, you know, hawthorn, uh, service berry, apple if we can find it, and other beneficial fruiting shrubs and, and wildlife trees, uh, large and healthy cherry if we can find that as well. We're keeping those intact, we're keeping quality specimens of those intact, and everything else uh, we're sort of knocking out. Tag elder as well, we're doing a lot of tag elder shearing on this property, we've got some dense colonies of that. You're not necessarily getting rid of that tag elder, but when you regenerate it, and a lot of bird species, grouse and woodcock and other small wildlife really appreciate that cover type uh, when it starts to come back in a few seasons here real aggressively. <laughs> Well, the machine we're using here today, this is a, a CAT 299 track, compact track loader uh, with our mulching head and, and we can essentially take care of any size of vegetation that a customer would need with this unit here. We can chip up large trees, chip up uh, underbrush and, and, and smaller trees with it. For the purpose of this project, we're you know, leaving some bigger shards and, and chunks and pieces of wood um, because the idea with this project is to you know, quickly regenerate some of your beneficial herbaceous vegetation and fruiting species in, in coming seasons. Uh, so as opposed to making everything real fine, it's, it's going to kind of look like a mess when we're done, but uh, that's the idea and that, that's what these wildlife species uh, and, and the soil itself will appreciate. So the work's done, and so basically what we've had going on uh, with this forest, this was kind of what I would call a marginal uh, portion of the property that I have in the QFP program. And uh, what was really helpful about it was it, you know, it created the opportunity to uh, to work with Eric Swice on clearing out, uh, you know, because I had some really thick tag alder stands uh, that had been here a long time. I mean, it was, it was, I mean, it was really dense. And uh, between the tag alder, I had, you know, kind of some marginal aspen stands that, you know, if we, and the whole idea was, you know, mow those on over and and get some really good regeneration that'll help, uh, you know, not only the the warbler population but also uh, with the grouse and and wood cock as well.
For doing this habitat work, we use the USDA's Natural Resource Conservation Service. They have a program called the Regional Conservation Partnership Program, which American Bird Conservancy has applied to, and we have gotten a five-year-long partnership with the NRCS to create golden winged warbler and now also Kirtland's warbler habitat so that we can come through and we can help landowners make this habitat, but we can also help them with financial assistance. So we apply to this regional conservation partnership program to try and get some funding from the federal government to help create this new young habitat. Project was certified by ABC and we work pretty closely with the NRCS office out of Barriga. Uh, Todd Larson uh, was up with us, uh, you know, and, and kind of came out and looked at the project while it was ongoing uh, and, and was making recommendations to us as well. And uh, so that was very helpful. It's a really nice relationship going on between ABC and the NRCS. We just had a renewal, so we have been doing this work for the past five years, and we are going to be continuing to do this work for the next five years. So I'm really excited. We're all really excited that we got this extension. We've owned this property for, for 20 some years, and until the last year, it was overgrown with tag alder, and basically we couldn't do anything at all with it. We couldn't walk through it, we couldn't enjoy it, whatever. And uh, I'm currently a uh, the director of forestry technology at uh, Gogeva Community College, and I get a lot of email blurbs and, and stuff like that. And one of them was about creating habitat from tag alder for golden wing warbler. So I used to work for the Natural Resource Conservation Service, so of course I made a couple of uh, contacts, and they said, oh, sure, we'll come over and check it out. And they did, and, um, and it was very exciting because you know, although the golden wing warbler is a is a very important species, and it's and we're trying to keep it maintained, it also um, is kind of a surrogate for many other species that benefit from this type of habitat. And we've noticed a big increase in, in the rough grouse, and actually, its wild turkeys have have taken a residence here as well, uh, along with a lot of other songbirds. Um, and now we have this uh, this wonderful area where we can walk around and enjoy the wildlife, and uh, and do a little. Um, and you know, and just and just enjoy their property much more, and that's a huge part uh, of the the fact that we've been able to do this. Uh, and plus, it gives us, you know, we're we're both semi-retired, and uh, it gives us uh, really something to do. I mean, we've got 17 acres of ground to work on, and we can kind of like we're planting uh, other other a lot of shrubbery for um, for to enhance wildlife feeding. You know, a lot of the trees that were left are mass producers, the cherries and and the oaks and and things like that for the animals that like to eat. And we're adding to that. Uh, with a lot of native uh, berry producing species. I've been watching more too, and one of my favorite discoveries this week was uh, the butterbutt, a uh, yellow rumped warbler. So I'm, I was excited because I thought maybe that's a golden wing, and I thought, oh, the gold patches are in the wrong spot. <laughs> so after a little conferring with Mike, we figured out he's a yellow rumped warbler, also known as a butterbutt. Now, how can you not get excited about that? So what we have out here a lot left, there is a lot of black cherry trees left mm -hmm. over. Uh, and that's really great because it provides little little fruit that birds can fly around in the canopy and eat off in the summer. Mm -hmm. uh, and then yes, we have some tamarack left over, which is really great because it provides perching sites. The golden wing warbler needs deciduous trees for perching sites. A tamarack is considered a deciduous conifer, so it loses its needles every year. So the golden winged warbler will use that for singing sites as well. Tamarack branches usually have these little little nubs where all the needles grow out from each year. And then the cones are nice and quite tiny. So they produce plenty of, plenty of seeds usually. When we're planting different shrubs or trees, we also want to try and get a good variety of uh, species so that we are providing more than just one type of food source for new wildlife. This happens to be witch hazel. And these are plant tubes, which are going to do many things for us. Um, certainly to protect them from deer and the rabbits from predation there and give them a chance to at least build up enough of a system so when they get big, um, they'll be able to withstand the predation. Um, so we've got this little stick to stabilize it, and this lets the air in 
it lets sunlight in and actually filters it so that the wavelengths that are more appropriate for growing are right here. And then there's a little cap on the top so birds don't get in and get stuck. So what we're doing is, is softening the tough edge. It started to build different layers. So throughout the place you'll see our little planting tubes with a variety of species. I think we've got 10 different types of plants, shrubs that are going in in different places. Black cherry trees, the way I, one thing I think is very distinct usually is the bark. I consider it like it looks like potato chips. It's peeling off a little bit kind of everywhere. Usually up in this area, they don't usually get really big. I would say this is probably on, on the larger side that we'd probably be seeing uh, black cherries grow to. Most of what we're standing on, this uh, slash left over is a lot of tag alder. And this will uh, break down slowly. And it's really good to have all this slash left over though because uh, birds and insects will or I should back up a second. Insects will use this for uh, areas to live in and find food, and then birds will use that for uh, kind of the same thing. They eat the insects, and then they can also gather uh, nest building materials from all this stuff left over too. But this patch of trees right here, we are standing in aspen trees. Many people might call them poplar trees. And what we do with these is we come through for typical forest management, we come through and we clear them all. We cut them all down because Aspen needs a lot of sunlight to regenerate. And over a couple of years, we're gonna get a lot of new Aspen trees replacing them because if we cut it in the winter, for example, all the energy from the trees are being stored in the roots. So in the spring after being cut, all that energy is gonna be pushed up and we're gonna create new new shoots. In the first year after being cut, sometimes we can see these shoots grow three, four, five feet tall. So it doesn't take long for these to come back. And in those years, we can create great young early successional habitat that is really important for the golden wing warbler as well as many other wildlife animals. Uh, they do grow in clumps. Most of these trees right here are probably all one tree because they all grow from the same root system. When we cut the trees, the roots spread more, more trees come up. So these, these are all uh, very, very similar trees, if not the same tree. When this tag alder gets mature, it tends to flatten down the, the larger limbs on the outside, they tend to flatten down and kind of fall over. They're, they're, they look like they're dying almost. So we come through and we cut all these things down and we get young habitat coming back. One other thing that I think is exciting, um, I've always thought of wonderful woods as being northern hardwoods. So I was not very excited about the tag alder, to be quite frank, when we got in here. It's like, really, this is our forest, huh? So it was very exciting to me to see that everything has a purpose and there's a place and there's niches. So that was, yeah, quite an education for me too. So that's exciting. My name is Winona Grishup. I am the a district forester for the Gugibbet Conservation District with the Forestry Assistance Program here in the UP. And uh, Bill and Betty Perkis, um, since they're really active on managing this property and they're really informative and really eager to share the word of what they've been doing and showcase this fabulous property. We're going to hold a field day here on June 5th. The details can be found at gogibbetcd.org. If you're interested in attending, it's open to anyone. And essentially we're going to have Bill and Betty talking about what they're doing. We're going to have all the partners that were involved with this project here. So if you're interested in implementing it on your own property, you can get kind of first-hand knowledge there, kind of get started, kind of see what it looks like in your own eyes. Um, and obviously hopefully catch their enthusiasm for this project. And we'll be talking about all the different programs available to forest landowners in the UP, whether or not you have tag holder or not. Um, so we have a slew of programs for all sorts of landowners. So if you're interested, that's June 5th. It'll be in the morning through the afternoon, um, completely free. More information at gogiviccd.org. Well, that's it for this week. Be sure to check out 906outdoors.com where you'll find the 906 fishing report, TV6 weather, shopping, and more. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next week right here on Upper Michigan's very own Discovering 906.com.